What defines a set of gaming speakers? Great positional cues and multiple different type of inputs? Now fam, it's RGB lights. The Edifier or HE SATE or HE SET or HE SATE, I'm not really sure how you pronounce it, the sub brand of Edifier produce the G5000 desktop speakers which I've got positioned behind me. They can be found for £350 in the UK and $400 in the US. In this review you can be seeing if it's actually worth its price tag. So to kick off this review I do have to talk about the aesthetics of the speakers and of course yes it has the fabled RGB lights. Now they can be customised to a certain degree via button found on the right hand driver. If you were to double press this button and note if you do only single press it will adjust the sound mode so you do have to be kind of careful in that department, but when you double press it you can cycle through a solid, a pulsating or indeed a rainbow type of look. Now in my case I actually completely like to disable all lights around my desk and including within my PC. I don't like RGB lights even though I'm a hardcore gamer. In this respect you can also disable it by long pressing on said button. Now it's worth bearing in mind that if you are to use a certain mode for example, let's say if you like it on a solid red colour, well if you were to set that in terms of when you're using the speakers and then you were to switch it off and then switch it back on, you'll be pleased to know that it does retain the last used mode and therefore means that you don't have to cycle back to your favourite colour mode each time you switch on the speakers. Now aside from the RGB lights, the speakers overall form factor is relatively small and here I feel that it will fit on most desktop setups. Elsewhere you do have smaller rubbery feet that are found underneath the speakers in order to prevent vibrations and then you also have this kind of cyberpunk-esque futuristic type of vibe at least for the overall design of the speakers and combined with the RGB lights means that it will appeal to most, at least in my opinion, at least for a hardcore gamer. But I'll be intrigued to hear your thoughts in a comment section below. But what I will say subjectively is that the speakers don't have a frontal grille and therefore means that the main driver unit is not protected. So for example, if you have cats around scratching your stuff, for example, not that I own pet or at least not a cat, it might raise certain concerns. So that's just something I thought to highlight. On the plus side, the tweeter is protected by a metal mesh and therefore means that it's a little bit more protected from the exterior environment. Now moving past all of this, I should also mention in terms of you interacting with your speaker, you have got the buttons found at the right hand side driver and you've also got a small little volume toggle which is very easy to access. I would have personally liked it to be placed towards the front profile of the right hand driver making it a little bit easier to access your volume volume on the fly, but I understand in terms of a design standpoint of view it wouldn't have made the speakers as attractive. But of course that is quite subjective. Now in terms of again on more of an objective point of view we have to talk about the inputs that the speakers has. Now it's got Bluetooth where the 5.0 technology is used, aptx HD, aptx and the SPC codex are all in utilization which is fantastic to see specifically if you're running on an Android device and therefore able to use the more higher fidelity or higher quality audio codecs. Then you've got a coaxial input, a 3.5mm jack input and then you've got USB and optical. Now a little note on the two last inputs that I mentioned and here it's worth bearing in mind that the optical input supports the highest quality 24-bit 192 that the manufacturer claims. If however you're running it over a USB input, so for example if you have a laptop and you don't have access to an optical output via your motherboard, what you'll find here is you're limited to 16-bit 48 kilohertz. And this is something that is not actually highlighted on the manufacturer's website, but it's something that I thought to point out in my review because it's something that, well, I quickly figured out when I looked on my Windows sound settings. Now elsewhere I should point out that if you're going to be cycling between the different inputs or you're going via the different sound modes it does take a little bit of time in other words there's a little bit of delay when transitioning between them also there's a odd sort of pronunciation inputs is made as imputes and modes is mutes hear for yourself and let me know what you think coaxial input usb input game mode Movie mood, music mood. 
And so this perfectly leads me on to sound quality. And here the speakers have got 88 watts of total power output, and that's thanks to the 32 watts driver found towards the bottom and the tweeter delivering 12 watts of power. In terms of the frequency range, the manufacturer claims a 70 hertz to 40 kilohertz frequency range. It's quite odd that it goes up to 40 kilohertz because your hearing will probably tail off at 15 to 18 kilohertz, or if best case scenario, it'll be 20 kilohertz. So it's quite intriguing to see what the frequency range that they've actually chosen. Nevertheless, what I'm going to do is give you a sound demo. And first off, we're going to go on to a music demo. I'm going to be using my friend's song. It's from Priya J, and her song name is called Falling. It'll be found in the description below in case you're interested. And I'll also be going through the different modes. In other words, the uh, music mode, the movie mode, and also the game mode. So do check out the annotations down below to understand which mode it's actually running on. Young is so high, then learn how to fly. It's the only way I you know how to play this game to success. I'm not quite sussed it yet. When I reach the brink, don't stop to think. I always sink, and now I'm so falling from so high, falling from so high. Movie mood. Music mood. Now, while hearing an audio demo over YouTube is never ideal, specifically via my microphones, I'm going to get onto my subjective opinion. And first off, let's talk about that sub bass. Now, indeed, these speakers are rated to go down to around 70 hertz, but unfortunately, that's not as low as some of its competitors, including from speakers from Edifier themselves. And as a result, means that that low end extension is cut short. Be it if you're watching movies, you're listening to music, or let's say playing games, you're going to find that that sub bass tone is just a little bit missing. Now it's a shame as well that Edifier has decided to emit an actual subwoofer bit in the box or even as an additional option because the speakers do not have a subwoofer output and therefore if you even did want to add a subwoofer at least to the speakers and from my knowledge and even from reviewing previous Edifier products it is somewhat limited. You can go via the coaxial input but I think you'll have certain issues by doing that. Nevertheless what I'm trying to say over here is that the lack of a subwoofer or indeed the option of having an additional subwoofer does hinder its sub bass response. Now on the plus side, the mid bass is pretty impressive. Not only is it punchy, but at least in my opinion, it feels pretty controlled. I wouldn't say it's as controlled as more expensive bookshelf speakers out there on the market, but it will suffice specifically for its price point. I was left impressed, be it when I was listening to music, or indeed when I was gaming, and when I was hearing some certain explosions, for example, it kept me excited, and it didn't feel that it was completely subdued. Now as for its mid range, it's unsurprisingly a little bit pushed back. The reason I say unsurprisingly, because my previous experience of reviewing other Edify speakers, and furthermore, this is aimed at a gaming crowd rather than an audiophile crowd, and as a result, a somewhat warm sound signature is quite pleasing to most consumers' ears. So here I've got no over complaints or certain things that I really should highlight, it's just that you should be bearing in mind that some audiophile grade bookshelf speakers will do better in this department, and if you want some of my suggestions, including from Edifier themselves, they'll be down in the description below. Now as for the highs, they extend really well thanks to those dedicated tweeters, and as a result the kind of crystal symbols that you'll hear in songs or the sort of nuances you'll find in games will come out really well. They don't sound too sibilant or harsh either, and in my case I didn't find any sort of ear fatigue, be it listening for a long period of time or even at louder volumes. But of course your mileage may vary depending on your own hearing sensitivity. My ears go to roughly 16 to 17 kilohertz. And finally we get onto the sound stage, and here the speakers do a really good job of instrument separation, which is absolutely key when it comes to positional cues. 
including the fact that you got those tweeters and therefore gives you a little bit of extra separation in terms of knowing what you are hearing, it means that when you're playing games or let's say listening to music or watching movies, you're going to get a great sort of instrument separation and that great sort of positional awareness. But when it comes to the overall width and depth, it does sound a little bit closed, and I think this is namely due to the overall size of the housing. Given the speakers are relatively small in comparison to larger size bookshelf speakers, they don't give you that same sort of expansive soundstage, and as a result, if that's something that you're after, then you're going to have to either invest more or indeed compromise on other certain aspects of the bookshelf speakers. So with the sound quality section out of the way, we get on to gaming. Now you might be wondering what on earth is a difference between gaming and the sound quality. Well, there isn't many to be quite honest with you because the soundstage department that I covered really does cover a lot of things that would be appropriate and relevant to gamers out there. But nevertheless, given these are gaming centric speakers, I thought to have a dedicated gaming section for it. Now, before getting onto my subjective opinion, there's a little bit of an audio demo. I placed my microphone and my camera while I was playing some CSGO Deathmatch and also while I was playing some Halo Infinite. Bearing in mind that the microphone is also going to be picking up my mechanical keyboard and the clicks of my mouse and sometimes some laughter or some sighs from myself. Nevertheless, let's get into the audio demo and I'll get into my subjective opinions after. Now I'm not really sure how much you were able to attain from my gaming demos, but what I will say here is that further cements my opinions and thoughts I had in the soundstage department of this review. In other words, the positional cues are phenomenal. It allowed me to find my enemies to know where they were in terms of situational awareness and move my crosshair to their heads, at least to the best of my abilities, in a game like such as Halo Infinite and CSGO. Now what I will like to point out in this segment of the review is the fact that the speakers do not have a dedicated headphone output, nor do they have a dedicated microphone input, which are two things that I would look for if I was a gamer buying a set of bookshelf speakers and or wanting gaming centric speakers. because. This is kind of fundamental. If you're playing at night, you're not going to want to disturb your neighbors or let's say your family members or whoever you might be living with. And with that in mind, it leads me on to my verdict. And here the Edifier G5000 active bookshelf speakers do well across the frequency range, have got a variety of different inputs, including Bluetooth and also USB. And furthermore, have got that gaming centric type of design with the RGB lights. Now, the thing is, would I recommend them as a hardcore gamer? Well, yes and no. I do like the overall frequency range that they offer, but if sound quality and soundstage was paramount to me and I didn't care about other features, then I'd look at the S2000 MK3s by Edifier themselves, because these speakers do just a little bit better in these departments. Elsewhere, if I want the features such as, let's say, a whole host of software integration, I want the ability to customize the RGB lights to my heart's content, and also I want a microphone input or a headphone output, then I'd look past the Edifier range and look elsewhere at, let's say, Creative or Logitech or even Razer. They offer a variety of different things that will potentially be more catered towards hardcore gamers. So it's not that I can not recommend these products, but it's also that I can't actively recommend the products given what else you can find out there in the market. Now I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts in a comment section below, and of course if you like this independent detailed review, drop a like and subscribe and hit that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.